Um, and then we got here this really interesting article from Mixmag um, that I want to read. I've actually I haven't actually read it out, but it kind of goes against some things that I uh, speak about here. But let me see what they're saying. It's a bit, a bit of a long one, isn't it? But anyway, this is the title. It says the following. This is from Mixmag. Are uh, basically having this uh, blackout thing where they're essentially highlighting a lot of black voices within dance music. You know, a pretty commendable cause. And they're addressing some of the poignant things that, you know, pertain to black people in dance music. And one of the most, I guess, permanent ones might be this headline here. It says the following nightclubs aren't utopia for every black raver, which I immediately disagree with. Right. Um, as a headline. But let's continue actually reading the actual article. Nightclubs are in black utopia written by Joseph J.P. W P. Patterson. Let's hear what he has to say. He says. The year was 2011. Jamie Jones remix of Azir, uh, Aziria and, Fr and Fred's Hungry for the Power, big tune, Hungry for the Power, um, had just hit the UK streets. Tinted whips reverberating with the sounds of Jones' groovy uh, bass field edit and Azari's lyrics of wanting more became the hustler's new mantra. There was something in here. I hadn't seen dance music grab the attention of young black Brits like this uh, since the migrant gang era of the UK funky, which goes uh, doubly for myself before Jones is hungry flip i was strictly into road rap and grime apart from the bass lines late rain in mid midlands uh for a long time house what well, was seen as a generation by a generation of black ravers as a sound that only white people liked which of course was before they schooled themselves on its deep roots in blackness soon underground house events began to pop up all over the country but can't stop one stop at aquarium to house entertainment audio rehab to Ava Wood. Ibiza became our own party destination. The back of DC 10, a sea of black and brown ravers. It quickly grew into a scene of its own, regular faces in regular places, with a community I feel I imagine was similar to the black house techno scene in the north in the mid-1980s. However, it didn't take long before the more established house uh, scene, love and unity sermon got thrown into the wind. Enter Shufflegate. Okay. That was an interesting era, isn't it? Shuffling, man. That was, again, all these sort of cringe moments in dance music history, when you look back at them, were cringe. And, you know, they probably exposed some racial division and whatever it may be. But they were really fun too, right? Seeing somebody f shuffle for the first time at a dance hall when you didn't know what it was at the time. And then you going home and sort of practicing it yourself and getting a hang of it. And then flipping, doing it when you go to the rave was such a vibe. It continues. Anyway, it continues. It says here, in 2012, I penned a piece from Mixed Mag on the shuffle dance craze that had swept the UK, um, popularized by black and working class Brits. The stereotypical shuffler brings aggression and bad man mentality to parties, making a lot of people feel uncomfortable. That was one quote I used from the anti-foot shuffling campaign group on Facebook, whose message was no different to Trump's Make America Great Again, full of racist undertones. Man again i don't know if that's true whenever i went to rave shuffling wasn't an exclusively black thing now the the black kids that were shuffling or the black guys that were shuffling there was a maybe a more of an aggressive tilt towards their shuffling but i don't necessarily see that as an issue i guess when they were doing it people would necessarily people would understandably kind of back away and sort of move to other places in the dance floor just to kind of get away from any kind of aggro and you know with men as i said before about the gym there is this always there's kind of always an underlying sort of vibration of physical aggression that might burst at any moment in time that's again that's just not exclusive to one uh, demographic of people i think men in general always have that which is why uh m you know arguments and debates with men can only go to a certain limit before it has to go to a physical point because you know we can't just keep gossiping and ranting and you know uh shying at each other like women can unfortunately we don't have the ability to do so so i, I don't necessarily buy that but let's continue this then led to a popular party is like creep like crash abode oh yeah good times man banning people from dancing in this manner alienating a whole group of people who just wanted to enjoy themselves without being judged foot shufflers and foot shuffling is banned from crash for a full future event and by those dodgy caps turning up wearing a cap saying boy and probably won't get answered crash on facebook while the fans were both celebrating the ban on social now the interesting part about this is that these these places right the boat and the crash they're still the same now right they're essentially you know havens for like you know working class whites especially people that live in essex and whatever it may be right they love these events they play the music that they like they all kind of dress dress alike tight shorts tight shirts the girl in colorful floral like it's they've got a particular scene so when they banned shuffling it didn't necessarily only target and alienate black communities it also targeted and alienated the people that go to their own events because they wanted to get a certain clientele of people 
not coming to their parties because they felt as if those people kind of were the lightning rod for some of the aggro's nonsense that happens on the dance floor, which is understandable. I've been to some parties where, you know, some of the guys have gone a bit too over enthusiastic with their shuffling and the vibe of the party has essentially crashed to a steaming halt. Now, the issue with that isn't just a shuffling. Most of that has to do with this um, reluctance to door pick in the UK, which essentially, again, goes back to the government's um, enforcements of these draconian laws that prevent nightclubs from opening after the hours of 1 or 2 a.m., right? So because of that, nightclubs only have a really short window to make money, right, and to allow customers, and, and, and ravers obviously only have a short window to go out and rave. So what ends up happening is that most clubs and most promoters are quite laissez-faire when it comes to you know admitting people within their establishment they don't necessarily have door pickers in the same vein as places like a berlin where they're essentially quite selective about who they let into certain establishments and of course that can seem quite discriminatory but then once you go into said establishment you start to realize that ah okay the vibe is a lot better because they go out of their way to ensure a certain clientele don't come in and again if you don't get in it also gives you the training to understand that hey maybe i need to change something about myself in order to make myself more uh, uh, you know um to acclimatize more in that surrounding and then what you end up happening you end up having a community of people in a nightclub who have the same sort of collective understanding of what it means to be in that space and take responsibility for each other we don't have that in the uk we just have people going in absolutely steaming into a nightclub wanting to shuffle the nightclub wants to make money at the door the guy that's coming in with 10 of his mates he pays money he sips a little bit extra to the security guard he goes in he buys a hell of a lot of drinks he does other things in the toilets that keeps him active and then he wants to shuffle and you're telling him no of course trouble's going to kick off so again it's, it's it's difficult to read these sort of things but i don't like the whole like this is only affecting black people saying it affects everybody right but it's also more of a consequence of the government's reluctance to allow bars and pubs to open later if you open later then you have more of a you have more of a um, you have more room to basically pick who decides to come in because you have more potential to earn money, you know, if you have a bigger window to let people in. Continues. Uh, DJ Jawsy, a longtime friend of mine who is part black, um, founded the I, hashtag I Got Steps, a YouTube series that spotlights shufflers across the London. He told me that there was a stigma right from the jump. He said, brands, certain ravers and attached trouble with events that shufflers seem to attend. He says, some events were def definitely seen uh, more hood, but more so in a way that people dressed than in violence. And this is what seems to scare the more established promoters and brands. There was a clear divide uh, amongst the black and white ravers, which almost seemed planned by certain promoters. You had events like Can't Stop, One Stop and Ava Ward, whose crowd used to cut shapes, but you also had parties like Magna Carta, who had a lot of shufflers, but they were young white kids from Essex. Of course, that ends up happening, but this is the thing. The discrimination in some of these places is mostly, and I think, in my opinion, due to these really draconian, draconian licensing laws. And if it isn't, they're also discriminating against each other anyway, because you go into these sort of like, you know, it's credibly whitewashed tech house raves, right? They've all the DJs look the same. They all play the same music. The ravers all look the same. But then they also discriminate amongst them. They don't want a particular kind of guy to come in. They don't want too many dudes to come in. If the dudes do come in, they have to buy a table. They want a particular girl clientele to come in, not other ones. They make the other people that aren't necessarily part of that vibe feel uncomfortable. It's a discrimination all over the place. And my uh, my solution to this would just be for each demographic to sort of provide themselves with a safe haven, a utopia that they can kind of call their own. It's going back to the documentary with Larry Levine at Paradise Garage, where he provided a special space for black and queer lgbtq you know black and brown people to go and rave and have fun i think they said in the documentary that they had i think the straight night was friday and the gay night was saturday right clear delineation but also an understanding that that space in general was a safe space for the lgbtq community so you couldn't go in and have some bigoted you know um point of view regarding people's sexual orientation because this place was made with these people in mind but again less complaining from a larry levine and more setting up of that place and imagine trying to open a paradise garage that's um you know essentially um catering to people of that sexual persuasion during that era in time imagine how difficult it kind of been so nowadays when i hear people complaining that certain places don't let black and brown people in or they're discriminatory i don't have any patience for it because i think you should just understand what the climate is, especially in the UK. There are some obviously um, underlying issues that we have in terms of nightlife, but just go and address it by opening up your own space. And no one wants to do that because that costs money and that is where the real risk is. The real risk isn't in putting in... It's easy to go to... It's, e it's really easy to do a set up a promotion at 338, set up a promotion at X or Y or at Fabric, right? 
but it's really difficult to go out and lease a building right kit it out with your own equipment um have the risk of it not working out higher security bar staff promoters all that stuff that's the really difficult part of it but if you're really about your business and if you really do think there's an issue at hand that is the only way to address it i think going to these venues that are inherently not catered to serving your audience or your community is a really naive and kind of short-sighted in my opinion let's continue um a known shuffler and regular on the london house scene uh puff the houseman has seen his friends get racially profiled more times than he can count he said i'm white from a workhouse background in south london he says and i've been submerged in the black culture all my life house and techno is black culture when with the music shuffling things certain white people looked at us and things these things are going to cause trouble even though we'd be just be dancing creating a vibe and because of this i couldn't go out and my friends because they couldn't get in most places so i had to make new friends to go out with on my own once i reached a boiling point and called out racism online i was banned and sometimes removed from several events in london okay that's obviously an issue there obviously it's a bit anecdotal because this one guy talking about his experience this idea that somehow because house and techno music um is um founded in black culture that that scene as it is now has to bend over backwards and sort of like lay out the carpet for black and brown people is absurd i never understood this even if that is the case just go and create your own place i just don't see the i don't have any patience with that attitude that's whatsoever yes house and techno music has its roots in black culture cool then go and make your own space. Go set up a space that you can go and book all your uh, black and brown uh, techno and house artists and have them play there so that you can actually provide a space for people who actually want to do the education, people that maybe want to have a different perspective on what the scene is about. Because again, I understand going to an Awakenings and seeing that lineup, that's not very, that's not, um, that's not uh, representative of the techno scene at large. It isn't, right? Same name, same faces, same music, same vibe, same audience that goes to every single event. Of course, it would be far better if these promoters would be a little bit more courageous in their lineups, right? And book some more interesting people. But as we've seen with COVID, promoters are risk adverse, right? We all thought that COVID was going to be the dawn of a new age for local for promoters to get DIY and to hire local artists and to kind of, you know, um, rejuvenate the scene. But instead, it's done the complete opposite. Promoters are way more at risk and way more um, opportunity to lose money, right? With limited capacity and working on these restrictions. So they go out and book the you know the people that actually can put bums in seats that can figuratively and literally sell tickets right and those happen to be the same 10 to 20 people that are all on all the festival lamps all the big nightclub uh, lineups that's essentially what's happened now if that's the case you owe it yourself especially now during covid where things are a little bit scrappy and you know a little bit vague and you know you can maybe set up your own illegal raves here and there to actually do your own event book your friends who you think are sick right and basically push whatever messaging that you want present whatever idea of how to techno that you want to present this is the moment when there's a bit of a lull this should be opportunity but to sit there and point the finger at this establishment in order to kind of get them to change their ways is ridiculous because they want to do things one way which they have the prerogative to it's their establishment they can do whatever they please and you have opportunity to do things yours because that was a big proponent of that even when remember when everyone was going out in brick lane and if you went out in Brick Lane with your friends who happen to be predominantly black, you'd get rejected from most of the clubs on Brick Lane, right? They just refuse entry to most of you, especially where's that place that used they used to put um I forgot where's that tech house place? They, there's there'd be a tech house night they used to put on um across the road from Truman Brewery. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about if you've been there, right? They'd they'd be super discriminatory at the door. But in my opinion, if that happens, I just stop going. And then what I do is I set up my own promotion, hire and book my own DJs, book my own venues, and then go put my own event on there and say, hey, if you ever got rejected from this place, you should come to my event. That's what I would do. I wouldn't keep going to this event every weekend, you know, essentially, you know, um, putting myself at risk and just making myself get sad and be disappointed for something like that. I would just go and do my own thing if I have the means to do, of course. But I think that's a far more constructive way to go about it. It continues, said, Ashley, who is mixed race, is one of the friends um, that Puff mentions. For him, he couldn't have been more blatant that he experienced the discrimination at the door of leading on the Ghana London Club. He said, me and my friend Wesley, who has now passed away, we went to Studio 338, which is, again, another um, one of those kind of iconic places for the more whitewashed version of tech house but again it is what it is they don't purport to be anything else you know let them do their thing but continue here's a here's a statement 
He said they queued for, up for a good 30 minutes to get in. And when we got to the door, there were two white security guards at the door. They looked at me and Wesley and said, you're not coming in. You look like criminals, especially you with the tattoo on your face. Whoa. So I thought, OK, then another time we changed our whole style and dress and went with a couple of our white mates. They let them in, but not in me and Wesley. I would never go to that place ever again in my life, which is, again, it's a pretty dickhead thing to do right super discriminatory and really disgusting it probably just says a lot more about the owners and the founders and people that work at studio 33 than it does right so that's a bad smudge on their name but again take your business elsewhere if there are other places that are more receptive to people that look like you freaks weirdos whatever face tattoo or no face tattoo go and give your business to those places don't subject yourself to um constant humiliation from places that don't want anything to do with people that look like you or people that sound like you i don't think that's necessarily good but again anecdotal so you can take away from what we want it continues studio 333 host promoters such as rinse sbtv and days like this which um welcome a black uh, crowd and the venue has recently had the likes of Wiley and DJ Markey and Luck and Neat Grace the stage. But while the venue can promote diversity via its bookings, microaggressions and discriminations uh, yeah, can manifest in subtle ways, such as to the door pickers or often outsource security let into the venue. So if it, if your free employs a door picker who makes sure the right people are let in, but what does the right people look like and what stereotypes and prejudices inform that decision? Club owners and promoters have responsibility to hire a diversity team at the door to discern which ravers shouldn't be let in. What the fuck is he talking about? And when I say diverse, I don't mean necessarily non-white people. Think more diverse in thought because Uncle Tom's are a real thing too. Yo, this guy is absolutely smoking crack. So what you want at the door, you want somebody to not only pick for race, which is super, super odd, but then you also want somebody to pick based on expression, what, freedom of thought? Like, what? How are they meant to know how you think? How does that even... Nightclubs by their very nature are discriminatory in some way shape or form they are going to be exclusive right because there's only a limited amount of capacity of people that can get in there right it's not like going to a supermarket there's only a limit of people that can go in especially if you're going to a nightclub that's well regarded well liked uh, a, a particular night a particular club night a particular dj is playing there's always going to be a limit to amount of people that can walk into the kind of place in my opinion the best places are the ones where everything is in where everything is considered from the lighting to the door picker to the sound system to the people that work behind the bar to the fly design right the everything that's the the best nights i've been to the best cars i've been to are where they pay attention to every single detail one of the biggest details that you have to pay attention to is the people that you invite into your establishment that's the biggest tell of whether a night, a night is going to be good or not and we've all got this experience you've how many times have you been to a we weatherspoons right which is you know one of the one of the most if not arguably one of the best and worst pubs you know chains in the uk but how many times have you been there with a group of friends that you love people you haven't seen in ages and you've had a fucking blast right you've drank a bunch you've laughed a bunch right and you just bonded in such a shitty place but you've had a great time why because of the people that you're in there with the same could be said and the same is even more so said with nightclubs the people that are in a nightclub really, really shape your experience in there. And if a club doesn't go out of their way to um, sort of um, mold or to sort of discern who should be allowed in the club, who kind of matches their vibe, the sooner that club is going to fail and go under. And most of the clubs that aren't around nowadays are mostly because of their reluctance to have somebody on the door who is basically um, picking who decides to come in or not. Now, should that process be a little bit more transparent? I don't think so. I quite like the idea that some places I can't get into. It's not bad because it gives me something to maybe aim for, to get, aim for, to something to kind of reach and aim for. Or maybe the fact that, hey, not everywhere around the world am I going to have free entry to go in. And there are some places where I don't want to go in because I'm, I don't feel safe. So I'm okay with some places saying, hey, we don't want some people that look like you in there because I know essentially where I shouldn't go and I give my businesses the places that I should go. But I think this idea that you should, number one, pick on skin color, Number two, pick on race. Number three, pick on four. Like, what? Let's continue. Um, one of my friends, Aaron, says he'd had similar issues. I've, again, it took he took about 338. I found myself traveling all the way to 338 with a ticket and on a couple of uh, occasions being turned away for no reason. Bruv, you're going to a nightclub. You, you might get turned away because it's full. You might get turned away because, I don't know, it's empty and they want to have people standing in line for hours. This is a standard procedure. 
people have think they have a divine right to walk into a nightclub is legitimately insane even if you have money now again maybe it's a it's a it's a kind of privileged position we have in the uk because we have such a we have such a wide range of places that you can go to hear different types of music and most of these places aren't nightclubs they're usually bars you just walk into but this idea that all nightclubs should be all welcoming is really odd the best ones i've been into are not like that the best ones are a bit exclusive in the, how they approach the door imagine if studio 54 existed nowadays the amount of trouble that would cause with some people and ultimately studio 54 turned into just being a mouthpiece or a playground for the rich and famous really but in the beginning it was extremely discriminatory um even so, much so for the people that were rich and famous right look at Bergheim even right there's that famous story about um who was it that got rejected is it jeff mills or someone really famous dj got rejected from Bergheim? Like happens all the time. Anyway, it continues. Um, I remember one time me and my friend messaged a party called Abode that was being held there. My friend is white. We both messaged them at the same time and they sent me the link to the ticket and not me. Oh my God. <laughs> Again, if that's the case, stop, stop, stop going to Abode. Stop even speaking about them. On top of that, shuffling, which is seen as typically black thing, Studio 53 Abode made it clear that the style of dancing was not welcome at their venue and the event. And I feel that instead of them directly refusing entry to young black people, they target the style of dancing used. And this is an angle not to allow certain people in their parties. Now, that's true. But I'm also, I also think that if they didn't want black people at the event, it just will stop black people coming in. It happens in Brick Lane all the time. Before shuffling was existed in Brick Lane, if you happen to go to a nightclub with more than five male friends that happen to be black, there was no chance you were getting into the club. They'll just say out flat out, you're not getting in. You'd be walking, you'd be in a queue, there'd be five white boys in front of you, they'd get in and you wouldn't. Right? So this angle, it's not the, the shuffling angle is not really a thing. They just maybe it's a convenient excuse. But if they don't want you in, they could just say no. They can refuse entry because it's a private business at the end of the day, ain't it? But again, if they don't want you in there, don't pay any attention to it and give you money to places that do want you in there or set up your own thing. Like that's my solution there. I don't understand this constant whining and complaining about places that are pretty clear in their approach and to, you know, they're, they're pretty clear in their stance. We don't want blacks. We don't want shufflers. If that's the case, don't go. Um, while Studio 53 maintains that people can dance however they want inside the venue, a person on Bird's Instagram from 2015 revealed that we are not a balaclavas and gum fingers, so you and your boys won't be getting in simple. Unfortunately, the scene has a new wave of youngsters that don't care about music. It's just about being well hard. Which is, again, true. It's a fairly accurate point to make. I think if you're putting on an event, a tech house event, and you're actually about the music and you get these people... Because that's the thing is what people don't understand. It's not just discriminatory against black. It's discriminatory against its own scene. These people are rebelling against the popularity and the mainstream appeal of this music that they're into. Unfortunately, it's going to attract a certain demographic. And it's, again, it's up to you as a promoter and a label owner, as a club owner, an event booker, to decide who comes to your venue because you want to ensure that the people in there have the best possible time so that they come back the next time. Like, how many times have you been to a shit party, just stay because you're, you're in there, and it never went again? I've done that countless of times. Now, for a promoter, because I know I've been a promoter myself, you can't allow that to happen. Because you, you don't know how... You can never estimate or guess how safe your next party is going to be. So you have to ensure the party you're doing right now at the moment is as best as you can make it so that you can give yourself the best possible platform to get another one the next time. That's what you can do. So again, I don't really agree with all this stuff. There's a lot more to talk about here on this topic. Um, definitely check out yourself, but I definitely think there's a little bit of a... Uh, victim mentality that I've never really been a fan of and again maybe because I'm more I'm more kind of exposed to the um you know the Berlin uh view of techno even the Detroit scene right where you know techno was sort of birthed there was a very exclusive tilt towards it they were really clicky you just, it wasn't easy to get in even if you produced music or you DJ, people won't necessarily give you the time or day. It's all difficult. And the best things in life need a bit of difficulty to get into them, right? They need some some barriers, especially if you actually like what you, you like. You're going to make the necessary adjustments. You're going to commit yourself as much as you can to be accepted. I did the same thing in skateboarding. I did the same thing in techno. I did the same thing with fashion. Like, I love these things. I was willing to put up with some of the dickheads. And eventually, I broke I broke down their walls, no pun intended. And I was able to kind of cultivate my own little scene and community through it. But to assume that everything should be wide open for everybody and all all world shapes and sizes it's not going to happen because the world isn't like that either but once you do get involved and you do find some barriers and you do find some opposition and some pushback it's up to you to then provide 
the next person less of that pushback and then provide a platform for utopia that's why i think utopias can exist because you can learn from all these bad experiences and then you can take all those bad experiences and try and correct those wrongs whatever you're doing whether it's a record label a party series a streaming thing you can do that on your own regard and i think um going on as if like everything is sort of like you know um do or die when you're black and brown and nightlife is really 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 just disingenuous in my opinion but again i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below it's articles called blackout nightclubs aren't utopia for every black raver it can be found on mixed mag but i'll put the link in the show notes for you guys to check out